David Moyes has got his faults. Loads of them, actually. However, at the moment, I can't help but think he's being hung out to dry a little bit. I sort of don't mind people surviving, thriving or failing off the back of what they've done or what they haven't done. But I always think it's a, a tough look when someone's being undermined. He's done plenty wrong, don't get me wrong. We'll get to that in a minute. However, I can't help but get the feeling I could be totally wide of the mark here, totally. But I get the impression it's almost as if the board would like him to resign. The people at the club are leaking enough information just to undermine him in the hope that he'll walk away. I might be completely wrong. The obvious reason for doing that would be so I don't have to pay the compensation package. But when I was on a Claret and Booze with Nick the other night, Tommy made a point. He was on with Nick before I went on. And that was that incrementally any additional places in, that we gain in the Premier League would offset whatever we have to pay Moyes in a severance payment. He was absolutely right. There's only one problem with that theory, though. That is that's working on the assumption that whoever comes in does better than David Moyes. There's no guarantee. I think we're all guilty of thinking we'll get someone else in, he'll be better and he'll be more progressive and we'll, we just, well, you know, that's not guaranteed, is it? We hope that Tim Steinson is able to pick out a manager as good as the one he picked out for Leverkusen in the form of Xabi Alonso and we, we hope so. But I, I do think it often doesn't make sense that the board don't want to pay up David Moyes' wages. But I do get the impression he's being undermined. The the constant leaking of deadlines, ultimatums, what he's doing wrong, how Tim Steiton's growing in power. It's just not nice. I'm glad, don't get me wrong, I'm glad Tim Steiton's growing in power. I really am. But I don't want him to grow in power. Here's what I would have liked to have happened. I would just like to have been in power from the point he was given the job as director of football. I would have loved it if at the end of last season, David Sullivan had an, honest, had an honest and frank conversation with David Moyes and said to him, David, outstanding, mate. Look, you know, you've whatever. Mate, have the most generous conversation you want. You've saved us from relegation twice. We've got three years of European football and you've just won the club's first trophy in 43 years. You've done remarkable stuff here at the club. However, we want to look in another direction now. Now, not just in terms of you, but in terms of the infrastructure in the club, I'm going, to have, I'm going to appoint a director of football. They're going to be in charge of transfers. We've had a look at what Chelsea do. We've had a look at what Man City do with regard to bringing the youngsters through and making a profit off that. We've got a great crop of young players. We want to start bringing them through so they either fit into the first team or if not, we want to create a system whereby even if they go somewhere else, we're getting... 10 to 15 to 20 million pound for these players. That's what we want to do. That's the model we've got going forward. Okay, so from now on, that's how we're going to be doing it. If you want to stick with us and you want to see out the last year of your contract and you're happy to work within those parameters, then absolutely great. We'll give it a year. We'll see how you go. And if you work well with Tim, then maybe we can look at it afterwards. But we probably want to do things a little bit different, although we're grateful for what you've done thus far. That's the conversation. That's it. It gets done then and it gets done honestly. But you sort of get the impression that Tim Steiton was brought in by stealth. So he gets brought in and, and oh, don't worry about it. He's not really doing anything. David Moyes, you're, you're going to get to choose the players. And you sort of get the impression that, yes, they did. To be fair, they did go and get James Ward-Prowse. They could have got Harry Maguire. They didn't. The haggling point was a loyalty payment of £5 million. They knew the manager really, really wanted him, but you got the impression they didn't really want to go and stretch the extra mile. Uh, the Jesse Lingard thing is, is too murky a water to even go into. What I've discovered is, though, particularly there's so much misinformation going on about the ownership and going on about David Moyes at the moment. We don't really know the truth that happened there. We just know what we've been told, and I ain't sure that I fully believe anything that goes on at West Ham currently. And I just think that I feel David Moyes has been undermined a little bit, and I think it continues to happen. And I feel a little bit sorry for him, actually, because he appears to be like almost like the loneliest man in football at the moment. Maybe it's Eric Ten Hag, I just don't know. And as the games roll on, the... The clock resets, doesn't it? We we had six games. We have three games. He has to win this. So, or he can't lose within X, Y, or Z games. And we get to a situation that we got now. And the situation we got now is that a load of information was leaked. We had Sean on, and I was really pleased that Sean came on. I wanted to get 
the information from the horse's mouth, so to speak, and make no mistake about it, Sean Weston's contacts at the club are A1. They really are. You might not agree with what is being said, and I certainly don't like the way the board are undermining the manager at the moment. Oh, well, that doesn't mean I want the man. I'm not. A couple of people said this. You want the manager to sign a new long-term contract? I don't. I just don't. I haven't said that at all, and I certainly don't believe it to be the case. But just because I don't want that, it doesn't mean I want the board to go around it in a sort of skullduggerous way that they are. I, I just want them to tell the bloke and just to do it a, a clean break. What do they call like ripping the plaster off, ripping the band aid off, something like that, isn't it? The, the term is is uh, is not dissimilar to that. And that's what I really feel needs to happen on this one. So, so, you know, we got Sean on, we got the information. And the latest information is that David Moyes has been told now, or I don't even know if he's been told, it might, he might have to read it in the newspapers, but David Moyes no longer has any input in transfers at all. Tim Stuyton's going to have a role in transfers. And, and, and for, for clarity, because there's, there's always a couple of people in the chat who don't quite get what I'm saying. I want Tim Stuyton to run the transfers. I absolutely do. I just think David Moyes doesn't need to notice this information secondhand. I think he should be told at the start of the season. This is going to be difficult for David Moyes. It really is. And the board know it because David Moyes is one of those old school managers, isn't he? He's gone from being omnipotent. I mean, the, the his power base within the club in the last 18 months must have shifted significantly. He's gone from being the most powerful man at the club in football in terms to, well, not that much, really. Um, he's he's not going to get to choose transfers, don't get to choose his players. And, and I think he's trying, by the way. Let me just say this. I think David Moyes is trying. So there's been this, I think this belief, and I've been guilty about this as well. I've, there's been this belief that David Moyes is too stubborn to play other people's players. But what was really interesting when Sean came on, he said that Danny Ings was a gift from the board to David Moyes. We've always suspected that that was the case with Saeed Ben Rama. He plays Saeed Ben Rama a lot. I know he didn't at the start, but he plays Saeed Ben Rama a lot. Considering Danny Ings isn't suited to David Moyes' style of football, and considering he's been bequeathed Danny Ings, he still plays him. Now, that doesn't mean there's not criticism there. We think he shouldn't in many respects, but that's, that's, that's totally different. I'm not. This is, this is a separate argument to whether Danny Ings or Divine Mubama should start. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, will, is the manager so stubborn that he won't play someone else's players? No, he's not. He's shown that. And then we hear that actually it was Tim Steiton who brought Caduce. Uh, he brought in Edson Alvarez and he brought in Mavropanos. Is Moyes so stubborn that he won't play with those players? He's not. He, he's not. He, he, will, he is using the players that have been given to him by Tim Steiton and the board. Again, that's very different. I actually think he doesn't really know how to implement them properly and I think this is a problem but I still think he's, he's trying he's trying his best I really do and it may well transpire that his best is not good enough and then we get to the tactics thing again I think he's trying as best he can as best as a defensive manager can I think that 4-4-2 against Brentford some of it was born out of necessity because obviously we had Pacatar and uh, Edson Alvarez out but he didn't have to do that. It would be much more in keeping with David Moyes for him to play three at the back and play with one striker. Do you know what? Maybe he should have done that. Maybe the result would have been different. But he did go for it. I, I, I felt he changed his tactics to go for an attacking tactic. I think where David Moyes got it wrong was at half-time. By the time Thomas Frank had sussed him out, David Moyes had nothing to come back with. And then he did a really stupid thing like bring on... Uh, Danny Ings, and then he brought on, obviously, Pablo Fornells, brought him on at the same time. He needed pace. He should have brought on Obama, and he should have brought on Maxwell Cornet if he was going to persist with that formation, which he did. But he tried, and he had a go. So I'm not entirely sure David Moyes is as stubborn as everybody thinks. I'm not sure he's stubborn as he's made out. I think he's trying to work within this new infrastructure of the club. Having said all of that, I don't think it's working. And if this is the way the club is going, which is the director of football is going to buy all the players and we need to enforce as a, a club structure where the youngsters come through, these, un, these, these under 21s who've won again, they smashed Liverpool, by the way. I think Marshall scored twice. Kadua maybe scored. Earthy scored. I'll come back to you on that. I'll, I'll, I'll do, um, we'll have a little look at that in tomorrow's video. And the club want to put an infrastructure where a director of football buys the players and we have a coach in place that is going to start playing youngsters. David Moyes is not that guy. 
And for that reason, David Moyes needs to go. But what we're witnessing here is, I think, a little bit of cowardice, actually. I think it's a little bit cowardly, I think, what's going on. Because everybody knows it. And, and I, really do, I really do think that. I think everybody at the club probably knows that David Moyes isn't a guy for the job. I'd imagine the board know it. Um, pretty much every board member, I'm sure, would know that be the case. So you're not going to come out, not going to say anything. I'd love them to come on a video. Love them to, but they're not going to do that, of course. Um, I, I would imagine I'd imagine a lot of the team are probably aware that David Moyes is a dead man walking. I'd imagine a lot of them probably know the significance of this Nottingham Forest game, which has become all more significant considering Forest's win. And I imagine David Moyes knows it. I imagine the coaching team know it as well. And I, th I think it's, it's a very, very difficult situation for him. And I just wish they'd had the conversation with him. I just wish they'd either let him go and pay him up and let him do so with his head held high. I think that's the point. I don't expect David Moyes off the back of that win in Prague to leave his job, particularly not if he's being told things. I'm, I'm pretty sure what David Moyes was told at the end of last season is not how the club looks now. I think they've tried to implement it by stealth. I really do. I think it's been a bit skullduggerous. I absolutely do. And I think he probably deserved better than that. So it's not for David Moyes, bearing in mind, he probably thinks at the time his job is all right. He probably thinks, well, this is fine. He's probably being told, oh, don't worry, Moyes, we'll go and get Maguire for you. Oh, of course, of course you've got You've got full control over the transfers, Moisey. Don't, don't worry about that. You, you, got, you got it all. Don't worry about it. Of course, yeah, don't worry. No, look, he's probably told Edson Alvarez he's a backup. Don't worry, we're going to try and get McTominay for you. Edson Alvarez is a backup. And I'm not suggesting the club are necessarily scheming, but I'm, I don't think they've been to totally truthful with him. It's actually, if that's what they want to do, it's for the club to let Moyes go after Prague and leave his head held high. That way you allow that man, off the back of a trophy win, to go and walk into a lot of jobs. OK, not Man City, not Liverpool or whatever, but a lot of jobs that man gets to walk into with his head held high. And I think this death by a thousand cuts situation now is, I think it's horrible. It's, I think it's horrible for all concerned. Again, I, when I went on with, with Nick on Claret and Booze, he said about the fan base being at each other's throats. He's absolutely right. When it gets, it's not just this. We've been doing this, we've been doing this at Hammers Chat since, uh, since 2016. And before that, we had a forum. We've seen a lot of this. And things are very different now from they were, you know. Um, it's just when things get tetchy like this, that the fan base do get at each other's throats. I'm sure we're not the only one. I'm sure every club's the same in that sense. And it, it's, it's this situation that is allowed to fester and is allowed to, to really sort of stew and... And I just don't think it does anyone any any help whatsoever. The easiest thing in the world, if what they do is plan getting rid of David Moyes, then they should probably do it now. I think they're hedging the bets. I think that they are possibly half wondering if he turns it around. He turned it around last season, didn't he? He did. But to be fair, there was a difference between this season and last season because last season he still had it over, a more, over another year. To, at this point last season, he had a year and a half to go. He doesn't. He's got half a year to go now. And you've got someone in the coaching staff, in John Heitinger, who was, was played the caretaker role at Ajax last season. Won 11 games in 16, which is pretty good. Did a pretty good job there. I think they were, they were pretty happy with him. He's on the coaching staff. There's a lot of things you could do. And I do think David Moyes' time is up. I really do. He, he, is, he is the proverbial dead man walking. And, and he gets a lot wrong. As I said, he gets an awful lot wrong. And because of those things he gets wrong, that's why he's not the right man for West Ham. But the club are handling this very, very badly. 